To start, can you tell us about Exile and your character in the film? Uh, yeah, so Exile, I guess the easiest way to put it is there's man Ted. He's just got released from prison. And once he gets released, well, first of all, he was in prison for being convicted of a DUI and killing a family. And then when he gets released from prison, the man whose family he killed, he gets a call from them and says, like, if you contact your family, I'll kill them. So his wife, Sarah, who's played by Camille Sullivan, um, she picks him up. And then it's kind of like their journey of figuring that out. Now, I, I don't want to blow any plot lines. And I'm, <laughs> I'm a little nervous of it, so I don't want to get too, too in-depth into it. But uh, yeah, it's basically he becomes a, a recluse and it's uh, them figuring out all that stuff. My character, I play Cole, who's... Um, he's not an RCMP officer, but he's like the, uh, the police up there, up north. Um, and I think it, Cole believes he is a good guy and the things that he does, he does for reasons that he believe is good. But, um, I thought it was really interesting to play because he's, he usually gets things by, um, either emotionally manipulating, like through force, through emotions of manipulating or deception, or he finds, um, uh, uses violence or physical reasons to get what he wants. But again, I think he's doing the things that he wants because he believes that he's doing them for good reasons. Yeah. Perfect segue to this next question, but there's so, so many subtle hints throughout the film about your character's family life and background. How much information did Jason and Mike provide you on that background and how did that enable you to step into his shoes? Um, honestly, they were so awesome to work with um, and they let me really like, decide where uh, I wanted to play that character from. Um, and I think I think what I decided at the time was like uh, Cole's, he, he's looking to prove himself, but I guess looking to prove himself in um, a more juvenile way where it's like, uh, I need to beat everyone up and that'll show them that I'm a man and I'm, I'm powerful. Or um, if I can make this person do this, then I win and I get it instead of a, a more holistic, uh, mature approach. But uh, yeah, I think his, he, I think he would have had a, a good family. Maybe there's some judgment from his family, but uh, yeah, I, I think that's the, the, the limit of what I took it to. But yeah, Jason, uh, he really let me do with what I want with it. And I, I really appreciated that. Like you were saying earlier, this script has so many twists and turns. What was your initial reaction when you read it? And what was it about this character in particular that attracted you to it? I actually really loved the script. I was super pumped when I got it. Um, uh, the first time I read it, I was like, oh, this is this is good. And then um, once it started moving forward with the project, I reread it. I was like, oh, this is really good. And I, I really, really liked the script. Um, so I was super pumped uh, from that perspective. And also, like, generally the characters that I've played in the past, they're more wholesome or they're mm -hmm. uh, guys. Or, so for me to get to play a character where I, I kind of get to be a meaner person or um, play a little more. Uh, that was a really interesting. So I was very excited to do that role. Is it more challenging for you as an actor to play a character who's so different from you? Is there a more freedom in, in a role like that? Well, I, I would hope that I'm a, a good guy, but I feel like, I, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, I, like, I wouldn't say it's, um, uh, necessarily difficult, but I would say that it's like it takes more um, thought to getting into their their processes and why they do things, and um, a little more of uh, getting in depth of like, oh, what's their motivations? Why would they do yeah. this to begin with? And then I, I like I have a degree in psych, and I've always been like very into like um, like concepts of deception and manipulation, or like. Um, that those areas of psychology so like that's super interesting to me so uh, I, I would I, instead of saying it uh difficult I would say that it was very enjoyable to put work into it mm. yeah, and, yeah. and the, the setting is a character in itself and you all shot this on location from an actor's point of view how beneficial was that in immersing yourself in this universe and then also creating that eeriness that the film requires uh I love shooting on location because like that's one of the things it's like once you're once you're there and you're in the spot you feel like you're part of it so like I think uh I actually got really lucky on the days that I was shooting because the weather wasn't too bad and I know <laughs> the weather was pretty bad on some of the other days but like I I love being out in nature to begin with and then like making that haunting ominous feeling with like uh the wind going through the trees and like these huge uh I think they're redwoods um 
like moving back and forth and in the night like everything's very mysterious like it, it really sets that mood because like if you're doing uh, auditions or you don't have anything else set up around you but once you're in that in that state everything just becomes real and alive so i i, I thought it was very helpful to create that mood in addition to the work that you've done on screen, you've also written, directed, and produced. How have your experiences behind the camera impacted the way that you approach your work on screen and collaborate with directors like Jason? Um, I think that uh, the, the more skills you can develop or the more like uh, things that you learn, it just like helps the process in any degree where, where it's like, um, like I, I have a a strong background in music. So when I read a script, I'm like, oh, what would the music be playing here? And then that can set my tone for that scene. Or if you're if, if you're working on writing and making that, then when you look at the dialogue, you're like, oh, I, I understand what this character is trying to get or this try, writer's trying to achieve. And sometimes there's a lot of reading between the lines. So mm. becoming a good reader helps you become a good writer and becoming a good writer helps you become a good actor. So I think all those things really intertwine or like understanding uh, the production side of days or, oh, we're in a rush here or the the choices that you have to make uh, on the spot to make adjustments. So like if you read a script and uh, you're like, oh, if we run out of time on this day, they're probably gonna move this around and then cut this aspect and lose this shot. So that means my dialogue when I deliver it um, they won't have this this cut and paste. Uh, now, Jason did a fantastic job of doing all that stuff. So this isn't a project like that. <laughs> um, uh, just uh, you, you, it creates more awareness when that you can put into your work because you kind of know more of that's or what's going on. And I really like all of those things, so it's very enjoyable to me. Definitely. And, you know, Cole and Ted have such an intense confrontation when they first meet. Without giving any spoilers, how were you and Adam able to build the trust that you needed for that scene in particular? Oh, Adam was awesome. Like he's he's done so many uh, great projects and um, he made everything very comfortable. And like I've done a bunch of stunts before uh, and... <laughs> Well, hey, I almost, uh, hey, <laughs> uh, I almost gave one away. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, everything was like, uh, he's, he's a very seasoned actor and everything was made comfortable and like discussing what's going to go down beforehand and everyone uh, being safe with what's happening. Um, yeah, he just, he made uh, it, it great. He was a fantastic guy to work with. You've worked on projects. Know question fully there but uh I was no, really you did. yeah yeah <laughs> it's one of those tricky projects where like you don't want to spoil anything and it really takes audiences on this like wild ride of whether things are real and they're not real so I, I, I totally understand why we're kind of no that line. You, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know you've worked on projects of all sizes what is it about independent filmmaking that excites you as a creative uh, I think um because it's it's not as uh, geared towards uh, like there's definitely the business element of making the project but I think uh, it more so revolves around the, the whole creative process um, the people creating the film in that moment those are the ones with the the input um, and it, for the most part everyone's there because they want to make the film they want to do this and it's uh, either a passion project or they're excited about what they're working on. So I love that aspect of uh, independent film. Um, I still love all the other aspects and I understand that film is a business, but um, it, it's it's really enjoyable to remember why you, you came into doing those projects. Like you just started usually because um, you really liked what you were doing. And I feel like that's the, that's the manifestation of that. Beautifully said. And you know, the film is making its world premiere at the Whistler Film Festival this week. What do you hope audiences take away after they see it? And is there a scene in particular that you're really excited for your fans to see? Oh, you're, you're almost like, <laughs> again, I, I am excited to see some scenes, but I can't tell you what they are. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited for the, I, I hope they take the same enjoyment I got from reading the script. Now, I haven't seen the movie yet, so I hope... Um, I'm sure it is great. I've heard very good things um, so good. from from Sammy and Jason so far. Um, but I, I hope they get the enjoyment out of it. And I hope the things that I tried to achieve in the film uh, were accomplished. Yeah, I've had a couple more questions for you. Outside of this project, what's next for you? Um, 
right now I'm working on some projects myself and I think uh, you're always on the lookout for the next thing. I have a couple things being released um, and I think I'm going to release a song soon. Uh, I'm currently writing um, a few scripts myself, but other than that, um, I think you're just always on the lookout for like hoping you get another exile that comes across your table. Yeah. Yeah. And you're, you're such a dynamic storyteller. What's left on your bucket list? Oh, there's a lot for sure. Like there's, there's like too, too many to list. Like, um, I would like to be a superhero. That would be cool. I think that would be fun. Uh, but uh, like characters like Cole, uh, in XL, I feel like, uh, those are the characters I really want to explore more people with, um, that are, uh, psychologically, uh, inclined to do evil i guess i could say from that uh i just i find it very interesting to do so um those would definitely be on my bucket list whether it would be like um a sadistic killer or um th like the manipulation tactics but really mm -hmm. getting deep into them yeah yeah i got one final question for you yeah. and you just talked about this you've been on the road recently how's the live stage inspired the different areas in your craft and artistry and then when can we expect that new single oh um so yeah i just uh, uh opened for uh garrett Nealis in winnipeg uh which was a great time especially like since like i haven't played live for so long yeah. because of all the stuff with COVID and everything so like uh doing that and getting that that rush and like it's another thing like doing indie film where you you remember why you're doing it instead of just writing songs in your house to yourself um you get to release them and show it to the world and like i've always found the same thing with acting and music where it's like when you write those songs from the heart uh you feel them when you play them and the same with acting mm -hmm. you feel those scenes when you do them so that that was uh great for me um the single uh, I hope it's coming out soon. <laughs> uh, I'm still, I'm, I'm in the mixing mastering stage now, so I think I'll probably release it in the next month or so.